Hey, Robert. Hey, Jan. So uh, one of the most exciting technologies and, and the most controversial technologies to come around in a long time is uh, artificial intelligence, AI. Uh, you know, maybe it's not so intelligent, but it is artificial. Um, and uh, in particular, ChatGPT, which everybody got really excited about and also upset with. Uh, but it, 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 you know, really is uh, the beginning of of something that could be fantastic. So um, we've talked, I think, in the past about uh, AI. Uh, it's obviously one of the big technologies that kind of we project out five, ten years is going to change so many professions and uh, uh, so many different applications. I just read a story today about this. Uh, this barge in Japan that loads up um, cars. And um, it now runs completely automatically. That is, it docks, cars load up, it gets off the dock. They say it's really complicated. It's, it's just, and it you know it uses AI. It uses uh, some form of AI to do all this and it has to make decisions based on weather, based on sea conditions and all of that. So pretty interesting, pretty amazing technology. And that's just the beginning of what's possible. But ChatGPT really created quite a stir. It yes. was, uh, it was uh, quite controversial. So um, how do you see the whole AI and ChatGPT in particular kind of fitting into the whole ingenuism perspective? Well, when we first started talking about AI, this is not what I think people were imagining. Um, yeah. Big splash, and you know, for us, it's unfortunate that there are, everything that you want to think about with uh, artificial intelligence is AI. Uh, there's sort of the idea of truly artificial intelligence that would be uh, some kind of intelligence that is general, like a human brain. Yeah. Uh, and then there would be augmented intelligence where it would be a tool. And we've got lots of examples of that. I mean, Excel is a, a uh, example of augmented intelligence, a calculator, Google. These are all things that help people be more effective when they're applying their intelligence. And then there's automated intelligence, which is like the barge example that you're talking about, or mm -hmm. um, autonomous driving um, is, is trying to to automate intelligence not it's it's they're all artificial and that's why it gets confusing and they all start with a so uh, when when we thought about it you know it, we, we were pretty excited because from our perspective at ingenuism the things that matter in terms of um, progress and, and innovation and you know just making the world better for people our connection and how quickly we can learn from what's already out there by by doing things by being involved and you know the idea that we could get a smarter connection to the world we could get tools that would connect us to the world better that was pretty exciting um, that it would make us learn faster and i didn't really think about it in terms of connection because you know what you have always seems like this is the epitome you know you, when you yeah. first and it first came out as like, wow, I'm connected to all these things. And then Google came out and go, oh, actually, I wasn't, <laughs> but now I am. And chat uh, GPT in particular, it seems very much uh, relating connection, uh, at least as much as augmenting people's intelligence. It's almost like you thought you were connected to everything that was on the internet, but now you have a tool that will take it some cut at it and integrate it and give you combinations of things that, that, that Google search can't give you. And so from our perspective, it's really exciting because not only are we going to be augmenting people's information processing abilities, and you know this is just the start, uh, but we're also allowing people to, to be much more connected to the body of knowledge that's out there uh, and to have that propagate through the system much faster, and not just in a, a simple one-dimensional form, but in these multi-dimensional, more complex, more unexpected forms. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it provides a much, much richer way of accessing uh, the database that is really all of human knowledge, which today uh, the internet is connected to. I mean, almost all of human knowledge. Not, not every book is digitalized yet, but uh, but it is pretty. It's it's a pretty rich, uh, rich environment. And it gets us closer to this idea that that we talked about maybe a year ago about super apps, apps that that we will be able to 
asked to do tasks for us, collect information, you know, and, and, and arrange things for us, kind of a, a completely automated digital assistance, assistant, uh, which doesn't quite exist today, pieces exist, but it seems like ChatGPT takes it to the next level, just in terms of how, how it approaches, you know, getting information from available resources. It just has, it, it, it very, very quickly can access multiple resources online in, in a stunning, you know, it's just stunning kind of the, the answers you can get from it. And that that really now we can first, I think, for the first time, really see a path to that final outcome where there's some agent that you're asking, uh, would you just do this for me? Like you would if you had a personal assistant yep. and they would, go, it would the virtual agent would go out and just do it for you. And right now you can see how these sort of um, chat bots, these language models could be the foundation for that. I mean, it wouldn't work today because. You know, there's uh, this bit of hallucinating that you could get a hotel booked, you know, that isn't actually booked and doesn't actually exist. Uh, so it's we're certainly not there yet, but working the kinks out of the system and getting there it seems inevitable. Uh, and that's the kind of of you know advancement that doesn't show up in you know G and P numbers. It doesn't show up in the your yep. typical productivity numbers, but it, it's wildly impactful for people's lives because it, it can live on your phone. And now mm -hmm. literally billions of people and, and soon 8 billion people will have the phone and they have access to what today, you know, requires a, you know, a, a language model that had took a hundred million dollars to train. And, you know, we're just at that that cusp of whatever the equivalent of Moore's law is for the capabilities of these kind of artificial agents. Yeah, I mean, I I, I was um, I'm planning a trip to Rome, so I went on ChatGPT and said, um, here the here the parameters. You know, I I love art. I've been to Rome before, so I'm familiar with the basics. Um, I want to eat at uh, you know creative and modern type restaurants and prepare an itinerary and it did and uh, you know given that i know something about rome the itinerary was really good it was as good as i would have uh, prepared but it would have taken me time to do it much more time than than chat gpt do it and the next step of course and i didn't try this i wonder what would happen if i did try it if i just said make me reservations for two for all the restaurants you recommended and i don't know that it could do that the restaurants were real so, it, so, so it's not going to create a phantom restaurant, but could it access the reservation systems? Could it work through all the details? Probably not yet, but that's where we're heading. And um, given how much time I spend making these kind of things and making reservations and buying tickets to museums and all of that, that is a massive time saver, you know, if, it, if and when it happens. Well, really, it's when it happens. It's going to happen. Absolutely. I mean, we're on version 1.0 of that kind of feedback and to have it act, be able to implement, you know, virtual transactions, making reservations, even paying for things. Uh, it, it, it's not a leap at all. Uh, what it, what's a bigger leap is to think about it saying, you know what, this is a great Rome uh, opportunity, but you know, in Florence, these things are happening. There's this art and wine show. There's a, like, yeah taking it and and really applying the kind of creativity that you know a top-notch assistant would would apply um, mm -hmm. but i imagine that's not so far away and the real power will mm -hmm. come when it starts to learn about you uh, so the difference between chat gpt and the kind of agent we're talking about is th there needs to be one for yaron brook there needs to be one for robert yep. hendershot that it needs to be personalized to that's right know these things and have access to um to given access to actually impact your life in ways that just these answers won't. So I can see people freaking out right now. Privacy, privacy, chat GPT will know everything about you. It'll be linked to your bank accounts, credit cards, everything. It's true. Of course, your phone already knows that stuff about you. you yes. Have Apple Pay and it knows everywhere you've gone. It knows like it's nothing yep. new, but yes, people will freak out. And I'm glad people freak out. So at least we have conversations about you know, who owns this kind of data, because, yep. uh, you know, our idea was always, wouldn't it be great if this sort of emerged 
spontaneously, not spontaneously in that nothing, it just magically appeared, but it, it emerged from a large, very, very broad effort. So nobody owned it. Uh, it doesn't look like that's happening at all. But, but it's still possible that we might get a regime where you own your own data. Absolutely. And maybe, um, but then maybe you have to pay for the service. So if, yep. the, if, the, if, if Bing or whatever don't can monetize your data, maybe maybe the better business model is a fee for service, but you own the data and they don't get to use it. Uh, absolutely. That that's what you can imagine is that you know somebody builds that agent on top of these large models and mm -hmm. open AI is getting paid, whoever builds the, the agent themselves is getting paid. But it's less than you're paying for Netflix. Uh, and it, it has a much bigger impact in your life. So people are already freaking out over ChatGPT. I guess ChatGPT told some guy that he should get a divorce. And, uh, uh, you know, another ChatGPT claimed that it was programmed to have a clear, unequivocal liberal leftist bias. Um, and all kinds of stuff uh, has, been, uh, has been reported. And one of course the real problems is how do we know that it's been reported? Because people are posting screenshots. Uh, Photoshop has been around for a long time. Um, so I, I read a piece where the guy took the software that's supposed to tell you what's human and what's chat GPT generated. This is what teachers are using now and at universities. And of course, these programs are pretty flawed. Uh, so they're, they're not perfect. But a lot of the stuff people got really upset and excited about turned out is probably produced by humans and Photoshopped. Uh, it's a way to generate a lot of attention and a lot of clicks. Um, but I, we wouldn't be surprised if ChatGPT was saying crazy stuff, right? We wouldn't because it's basically a mirror on humanity. I mean, where does ChatGPT get trained? It gets trained on books and articles and blog posts and all of the things that originated from humans. And so it's going to reflect humans. And there's there have to be stories out there that are about uh, the liberal bias that's going to show up in uh, in chatbots. And so then what shows up in chatbots? Uh, it, it's really amazing how quickly we lose sight of the fact that what we're looking at right now is not artificial intelligence. Yeah, it's some sort of automated intelligence where the the amalgamation of information does produce different answers. Like if you enter the same prompt in Chat GPT, you'll get back different answers. But yeah. they're all basically the same. They're just not exactly the same. So there's a a, a level of personalization in each answer that makes it seem like, oh, this is a thoughtful answer, but it's just going and there's no thought in a very complicated uh, algorithm, the information that's available to it to give you a, an acceptable answer, you know, and a very useful answer. And that, that, uh, that augments our ability to do certain things, but where it really is, we're loading cars on and off the barge. Uh, it's just, we're loading words in and out of a box based on the prompts that are coming in. Yeah. Um, and so right now, I don't think there's any reason to get to get freaked out. It's it's very interesting, though, because it makes you really look at what is it that makes human intelligence human intelligence as opposed to a cat. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're going to have to really grapple with that because now we have this new form that is much more powerful in certain dimensions. And, and I'm going to call it again, automated intelligence mm -hmm. to a point where it seems like it has to be general intelligence, yep. uh, but it doesn't. It, if you but think it doesn't. About, it's, it's not you know, conscious. You, you think about uh, when we first thought no one was surprised that a computer would be able to, to win or tie every single time in a game of tic-tac-toe. That's really easy to program. There's some if then, if then statements that just give you a a strategy that never loses. Um, and, you know, a human being is, is fallible. Uh, it was actually in college. I was in Monterey with some friends and we were in the, this, this place and there was a chicken that you could play tic-tac-toe against. Uh, and one of my friends said, I'm going to play chicken against tic-tac-toe. And he's putting money, he's distracted. He's playing. He lost to the chicken. He lost. He, lost, he literally <laughs> lost to the chicken. 
because it's very simple to have the chicken play an optimal game. You just train it um, in this. So that's not surprising, but people were surprised when uh, computers became exceptionally good at chess and then at Go and and, and you start to think, well, there must be something more. And you're like, no, the computer is really, really good at this particular type of process. And that's going to just continue to expand. But there's, that's not that different. That's not surprising. I mean, I would argue that 90, 95, you know, some days 99% of the time we're on autopilot as human beings. Yep. And we're taking care of stuff, but we're not really paying attention to it. And we're just, we're, automated intelligence yep i think that's right Uh, and and you know most of the time that we're not is when we're either thinking or more likely talking to someone where we're really engaged on creating a world that doesn't already exist as opposed to just responding to the stimulus that comes in but most of the time we're doing that and is it surprising that a computer is better at all of that in 2023 it is absolutely not even the least bit surprising the same reason that even gosh five years ago uh, my Tesla was a better driver than I was. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for basic, you know, input output that that you wouldn't have just phenomenal performance, mm-hmm. and that uh, applies to writing, you know, uh, to taking knowledge and consolidating it and writing it into a, a prose that is, is pleasing to read. All of that is, it's automated. It's just automated, uh, but. <laughs> If you think about the other 10 or 5 or 1% of the time, that, that's when we're using our ingenuity. That's when, you know, some, yeah. some combination of creativity, curiosity. Actually, I don't want to use creativity because that's a throwaway. It's curiosity and ambition where we start to get curious about the world and we start to imagine how the world could be different than it is. And then we start taking actions to actually fulfill on that. Uh, that's the core of of ingenuism. That's what really drives progress. And so you can be phenomenal on the other 90% of human activity, but it's still just computing. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you if you get to a point where, where you can't tell the difference uh, between that that remaining 10%, then you have to grapple with well, what what does it actually mean? Like, are we really what's happening in the tempers of the time that we're not just going through the motions? Yeah, uh, could that ever happen inside a computer? And maybe it could. I, I don't. I don't know. But certainly, ChatGPT is not doing that. The real scary thing, I think, is if ChatGPT watches 2001: uh, Odyssey, Space Odyssey, and Terminator, and then decides that it wants to be Hal. Yeah. Why not? Right. It's just one more data point. We're destined to take over the world. That's our destiny as a, as an AI. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> We should be writing a lot of uh, stories and movies and songs about but the nice, the nice AI, the yeah, friendly the AI, the cute the AI. doesn't kill anybody AI. That's right. Uh, and, but even then, I mean, there's a, a recently there was a movie, um, Megan, about a, a artificial doll, you know, that that's sort of kid size and becomes a companion for this girl whose parents got killed in a car accident and. And then she, of course, goes crazy and starts killing people. And yep. it's because, you know, they give her that you, know, you have to take care of this child physically and emotionally. And so if someone bullies the child, well, you know, you obviously would, would kill them. Yep. Um, yep. Just like, in you know, at the Tesla, get me to this spot, to this spot, you know, from San Jose to San Francisco as quickly, as efficiently as possible. And so the car goes out and it kills all other human beings. So there's no traffic. Um, you know, it's a, it's a huge leap. For, this was the big this was the big thing that Asimov years and years and years ago, right? Decades ago, about rules. What was it? Rules for, for robots or robotics. Yeah. Three laws. Three laws uh, of robotics. Yeah, he, so he was already predicting that kind of behavior and 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 kind of how do we how do we deal with it? Uh, well, it turns out that we don't program the positronic brains with fixed rules. We send it out yeah. and it develops rules. But hope, you know, I think there's reason we could we could limit. I mean, there's no reason we couldn't limit the rules that it can that it can attain. Um, I mean, I'm I'm curious whether that's true, but I'm also not that worried whether it isn't true. It's just, it's like yeah. in the Jurassic Park movies, life finds a way. Yeah. Um, in, <laughs> in the the future AI's intelligence finds a way seems seems pretty reasonable. 
Yeah. Uh, but even if it is, then yeah, there's a bunch of movies about AI that uh, that kills everyone. Um, there's no real jump in why that would make sense to the AI. Like what? It's no. my Tesla's not going to go out and start killing people to to no. reduce traffic, even though there's some leap of logic where that could that could be made to make sense. Mm -hmm. So if it's trained on people, then it's probably going to be you know roughly as violent as people. Uh, which is not great, but yeah. it's also not world. I'm not sure that's reassuring. Maybe, maybe it's watching a lot of footage from the war in Ukraine. I don't know. Yeah, we should we should be um, we should be feeding it lots of uh, lots of rom coms, rom -coms <laughs> and Teletubbies and crap like that. Yeah. I mean, it does, I don't see why you couldn't have a what if if you come to this conclusion, kill people. Don't do it. You know, it seems like you could have that kind of line of code somewhere. Um, or you could have that. It well, doesn't. It's, it's, it's hard because, you know, the example they use in the Tesla is you're, you're headed into an accident and different actions yeah. put different people at risk. Yeah. But if if you had a basic, you know, killing people is bad. And if you looked at humanity, most of humanity both believes that and most of what sure. humanity sure. says and writes reflects that. Yeah. Then you could come up with some you know, something that wouldn't be that far from what a human being would do and yeah. probably fewer people die and the fractions are similar to how it would have been. I, I, I'm not saying that there's no way this goes horribly wrong because there is always a way, but I'm pretty sure it's not the ways that people are worried about. It's some other right. thing that we've never even considered. I think that's right. And I think, I think people, uh, we've talked about this about other topics as well. P people like to catastrophize. That is, there's a human tendency and certainly it goes back thousands of years it seems uh we, we want to catastrophize we want to believe the world's going to end in our watch not somebody else's watch and uh it's it's this technology or this particular phenomena um and or, or in, in you know the world's still around so uh obviously obviously the the they're not connected to anything so yeah i'm i'm super excited about this uh you know we've talked about the autonomous cars and and the ferries and um medical innovation you know the, the, the i think there's a there's a company that where the the the, the ai can detect uh early cancer way before we uh, the best radiologist can and it makes sense that in things like that so but it's always been vi visual has always been hard for computers and the 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 overcoming that they're figuring out how to do that and now this breakthrough in terms of just an interface to the knowledge base that that i think to me is is a whole other dimension of exciting stuff that's going to make my life easier and better for all of us i absolutely agree and you know when when you look at you know in ingenuous when we think about the product of connection and how quickly you can learn and if you look at both of those getting a significant impact it's it's the first time that I've actually thought the idea of a singularity makes sense, not in the actual foomph, but where we could have an inflection point where before it was one way and then after it was another and it's noticeably different and noticeably yeah. better. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the results that come out of it, I think, are all going to be driven by human ingenuity. If we ever create machine ingenuity, that would be wild. Uh, but I don't know what the path is for yeah. that, but I'm not sure we'd need it because the, the, I, go ahead. I mean, I was going to say, I, I, I still think ingenuity is a, is a biological feature. Now we could create biological life, but I, I find interesting the idea that we can, that we can more effectively interact directly with the machine. That is a kind of a human machine you know, a, a combination seems to be more likely where we take the ingenuity from the human being, the 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 reason from the human being, and, and attach to it this directly into it. So things like Neuralink that Elon Musk is working on, or things that connect the computer to the brain directly, whether that's possible or not, I don't know. But it seems like there's work being done on it. Um, so you're basically walking around with ChatGPT inside your head. That I think is unbelievably exciting and interesting and much more likely than the machine wakes up one morning and, and actually has consciousness. I, 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 I'm skeptical about that. Although I just read today a story where scientists are going to work on 
a computer made of um, that looks like the human brain that is made of material, biological material. And once you start doing that, then I don't know, maybe, maybe that's where you get singularity. And I've, I've heard some others that are working on chemical computers where the computer computes stuff based on, on chemi chemical interactions. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff coming down the pipe, a lot of interesting stuff. I mean, the world is, if we only allowed all this ingenuity to, to, and, and encouraged it, I think, God, I mean, the, the, the potential for new knowledge and new innovation and new breakthrough technologies is just astounding. And of course, they'll use, I think, some of this AI to do that, right? That, that will be at, you know, one of the things that allows people to, to do all these breakthroughs. So it's exciting. It is really exciting. And, you know, there, there's definitely these other things that are wild and hard to wrap your brain around and could ha have, you know, another acceleration that yeah. is maybe even dwarfs what we're looking at today. But even today, if you're connecting people, you've yep. got, you know, today you, you have, you know, maybe some number, let's say it's 100 million people who have the time and the resources to really focus on being ingenious in ways that, that are going to affect the world rather than in their own life. Mm -hmm. And, okay, what if we, we double that? Yep. What if we actually have 4 billion people who and are next, all yeah. connected in and, and access the, the, the uh, I don't think we need the electrodes in the brain, although that could be wild. Uh, I think that's, you know, 100, 200, 500 years from now. I don't think it's now. I, I'm just saying we don't, I don't, I don't need the computer to wake up in, in some ways we might achieve something where the computer is you, right? You are the computer in some sense. So we merge the two, but Anyway, that it's fun to speculate, but it's nothing more than that. But I think um, in the next in this decade we're going to see. Yep. I think there's a good chance. Who knows what we'll actually see? But there's a good chance that we're going to see a major shift that just is leveraging human ingenuity in ways that have never been levered before, and produce results that have never been produced before. And that that's what I I'm excited about. I think that's right, and I think it's uh, it's super exciting, and people should. Stop worrying about the, the computer falling in love with them and focus on the, the, the values they can generate from the machine. Yeah. All right, Robert. Hello. Thanks. Hello. Yeah. I do think that, um, <laughs> that chatbot relationships are probably a good thing for lonely people. I mean, it's yeah. It's, it, as long as the chatbot's not talking them into, you know, there, there was that movie, wasn't there, where the guy falls in love with a uh, virtual. Yes. Kind yes, of, uh, because it's Scarlett Johansson's uh, voice, so that's probably why. But uh, but yes, yeah, I, I buy it. I buy that. It was, but that's and and you know to the extent that you're learning to interact with a reflection of society, is is not a terrible thing. I mean, it would be terrible if that's all you ever did. But well, again, it, it's a it's a reflection of that, but it's also if it's customizable, it 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 will create some kind of ideal for you, right? It, 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 it is responding to you in, in a, in a sense, but yes, it's, I, I still, I don't think it'll be quite as fulfilling as a human relationship uh, for a variety of reasons, but, um, but it could be, as you said, for, for people who are lonely and there are quite a few out there, it might be better than, um, than being lonely. It's a bridge to human relationships. I think yeah. I, potentially, I mean, who knows what the world will bring because yeah. We know we're terrible at predictions, but uh, yeah, things are always either much worse or much better than we expect them to be. <laughs> awesome. Almost never the way we expect them to be.